Hi everyone, welcome to Behind the Music with Stairway Music. I'm Sarah and this is my guest for today, Jared Grant. Welcome Jared. Good to be here. Now Jared is the worship pastor here at Stairway but has spent most of his life dedicating and devoting himself creatively and musically to all sorts of different endeavours within the church. So Jared, can you tell us a bit about your journey to becoming a worship pastor and a songwriter here at Stairway? Yeah, no worries. Well, I guess for me, my passion for worship, um, I discovered um, from picking up the guitar, my dad taught me a few chords and um, I was brought up around the church and I just came alive, you know, I just came alive when, you, you know, when you, you connect with something and you, um, what I discovered was I was connecting with God um, on when I was playing my guitar and I started writing songs, I started playing on the worship team in church, I remember playing um, in my mum's worship team at the church my dad was pastoring in. I remember one of the guys at the church said once, oh, I just want to be on once a month. And I was listening in on the conversation and he was like, oh, just once a month. And I'm thinking to myself, I want to be on every week, you know. Um, it just made me come alive right from when I was about 12 years old. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been fun getting into it. Since then, I've done all sorts of things. So I've, uh, um, I've cut down trees. I've uh, studied at Bible College. I've studied uh, music. Um, but the, all, all the way through, I've been about, since I was about 17, leading worship and leading congregations, traveling the world, doing uh, leading worship in different environments in, in the Philippines, at a big, big Coliseum event, and then like in like small house churches in like Papua New Guinea and, um, and in home groups here in Australia. And I guess for me, I came alive, especially in that place of prayer and worship and intimacy with God. And that's where I, I discovered his, his, his kindness and his love for me. Yeah, amazing. So today you're going to talk to us about the secret life of songwriters. So the things that go on behind the scenes before someone is ready to get to the point where they're writing songs for the church. So I'm just wondering if you can tell us what does that look like for you? What does your private life look like when you're not serving at Stairway? Yeah, I guess I'd start by saying oh, as I'm not perfect <laughs> and I'm just on a journey like everyone else out there. But I think that there's some key things that I've discovered in my growing and becoming um, yeah, in the place of being an artist and being a worshipper and especially crafting uh, worship songs. You know, it, it, one of the things that I've discovered is that it, if it doesn't, if uh, the, behind the scenes, if, if it's not a song that makes my heart come alive, um, how will it ever make anyone else's heart come alive? So really, I start here in my heart. I start in the place of how am I caring for my heart? My songwriting for me is a, a bit of a litmus test. It's the thing for me that um, indicates of how healthy my heart is. Yeah. And so because songwriting is the overflow of my heart, it's like the natural, you know, brings together my passion for music, my passion for the prophetic where I'm declaring and saying the things that are on God's heart, my passion for the word of God and declaring his truth and his nature. And so when all those passions combine in a really healthy Jared is a really overflowing songwriter. Um, and so if there's not health in my heart, I'm not writing. So it's a good litmus test for me. And so what I do to care for my heart and the secret life of, I guess, of a song songwriter is, is valuing the Word of God. It's one of the key things for me. Um, it's a seed that we sow into our heart and it bears fruit, you know. Um, and how will we know the nature of God unless we learn how to study what He's entrusted to us in the Word of God? I think that's really, really valuable. And, and I've come just come through a season of um, really focusing on that intently over the last year. I've nearly finished the Old Testament um, for the first time, like getting through all those really hard books. Like, I don't know how many times I've read a bunch of the books, but when it comes to like those really hard ones, I've, I've gotten through them all and I, my heart's just burning for it, you know. Um, and it, the Word of God is, is so powerful, you know, and it, it ignites um, songwriting in me. Now, there'd be a lot of people watching today who have really busy lives, who work jobs, who go to church, who have families, and you yourself would be able to relate to that with the busyness of having three beautiful girls at home. I'm just wondering, how do you go about carving out that time that's reserved just for God to work on the health of your heart, as you said earlier? Yeah. It's, it's lots of different ways, hey, like it. So this morning it was, we woke up at like around six, mainly because the kids are going crazy, which is a bit of a sleep in for us, which is pretty good. Um, but then we all like, we had a bit of brekkie, we 
put the Pilates DVD on, we got healthy, we did a bit of stuff together, and then I checked out. I went for a walk, I went for a run, and I find in those places where my phone's not you know, switched on and um, I'm disconnected from the chaos of a busy home, um, it's actually really helpful for me to have like a 45 minute window where I can talk to the Lord about the things that are burning in my heart, the things that I'm worried about, things that I'm anxious about, and giving them over to the Lord and connecting with His presence. So, you know, being um, intentional, it really, when it boils down to it. And because I'm a creative, I'm not super disciplined in the sense it doesn't look the same every day, um, but I, I have a value for it. And so I love having one chunk of time every week where I have a few hours of journaling and writing. Um, that's really helpful for me. I love having a part of my week where I'm fueling my passion for creativity. So whether that's connecting with another songwriter or a musician and having that one-on-one -on -one time where we're sharing songs with one another, I find that that's just such a helpful way of just keeping each other's flame burning, you know, um, just uh, sharing where you're up to. Um, as well as like, um, having dreams, like what are your next steps for your creative process? What's your next thing that the, the seed that the Lord's planted in? And taking a risk around, oh, I want to express this, I want to record this song, or I want to shape, um, shape uh, music in a certain way. Oh, I've never used, a, I've never written with a viola player before. How could I write with, you know? And so taking risks and stepping outside of your normal worldview. And, uh, and people, you know, doing life well with community like that. So, um, yeah, so in a mosaic way, answered a few questions. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so, Jared, you wrote the song 10,000 More, which was on Stairway Music's Send Light album. Can you tell us a bit about the songwriting process for that song and how it went from a time of inspiration with God through to a finished song? Yeah, cool. We were sitting out in the front of my mum and dad's place, beautiful blue sky, wintry day um, in Melbourne, which we do have a few nice days on occasion. Um, the, and uh, I just remember, you watch the wind and the waves, as I, was, as I was just delighting in the beauty around me, these beautiful trees, the beautiful um, blue sky, the kids playing, you know, flowers and trees around me. And, and to, to revel in nature, was was stirring in me and so to, to a lyric like that you to watch the wind in the waves you watch the wind in the waves um, form when you spoke just just imagining myself in that place of connecting with who god is as creator so uh yeah and then from there it's just that evolution of of rewrite and rewrite and i originally wrote the song in like a slow six eight type of feel which is like you watch the wind and the waves, you know, down there. And then when we were in the production process with that particular song, Joel uh, Dowling um, was like hearing it totally differently. And this is where the power of community and the power of shaping songs together is that he actually brought something to the song by just imagining it at a different tempo with a different feel. And that's what great producers do is they help bring the best out of a song. And so he sped it up and he started, took the accents away from the swing feel in, and made it a lot straighter. And it became more of an anthem rather than like this sort of, you know, floaty um, waltz. And um, it was amazing to see how the, that ignited just like a new bridge that we wrote, which was that instrumental section and stuff. And, um, yeah, eventually we, we recorded it and uh, actually one of my favorite moments of recording it was when the MSO played the, um, the strings parts yes. on the recording. It was just an absolute thrill to see that come together and uh, yeah, it was fun. Well, Jared, thank you so much for joining me today on Behind the Music and thank you to our audience for tuning in to another episode. If you haven't seen our other episodes of Behind the Music, you can check them all out on YouTube or on Facebook and even some snippets on IGTV on our Instagram channel. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again soon.